Hi, back for another beer review, and today I'll be reviewing yet another beer from the Dogfish Head Craft Brewery, and they are out of Milton, Delaware, and this is their Utopius Barrel-Aged Worldwide Stout, and this is the 2021 release. So this is an Imperial Stout that is aged in Samuel Adams Utopius Barrels. It comes in at 17.2% alcohol by volume, 24.5 IBUs at the time of review. This bottle is exactly three years old. So first things first, I want to give a uh, big shout out to a viewer of the channel, uh, Founders Q. He hit me up on Instagram earlier this year and was like, hey, could you review Utopia's Barrel Age Worldwide South? I was like, I actually have one of those in the in my cellar. And he was like, oh, that's cool. And I kind of forgot about it, but I hit him up a couple months later and I was like, I didn't forget about it, even though I totally did. So I do apologize. But uh, I was like, you know what? I'm going to review it on the three-year bottled on date because this one was bottled on um, August 28th of 2021. And I'm reviewing this one on August 28th of 2024. So um, yeah, I don't know why I didn't review and or try this one fresh, but I bought a single bottle, kind of threw it in my cellar and forgot about it. So it does say it ages well. Let's hope that's the case. I reviewed the Utopius uh, Barrel Age 120 Minute Stout, or uh, one, 20 Minute Stout, 120 Minute IPA, which was fantastic. Didn't really taste like an IPA anymore, but man, was it good. So I'm hoping this is just as delicious. I've had Worldwide Stout. I did the Wake Up Worldwide Stout. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm here for it. So I'm hoping this is okay. Three years in my cellar. Hopefully it's not infected. Hopefully everything's all right. Sometimes, you know, you... You play with fire, age in beers, but we will see. This is a big, burly beer that probably should hold up relatively well. A well, little bit of a spewage there, so hopefully that's not a bad sign. We're going to give it a pour here and see how this goes. It's looking all right. I'm going to try to go hard into the hashtag proper glassware. Wow, that tastes gnarly. All right, we're going to throw this over here. All right, so we're in the hashtag proper glassware. We are. <laughs> All right, so pitch black. I want to pour it out as more of like a dark brown, but it's pitch black in the glass. Um, about a third of a finger of this, we'll call it a, a nice tan, almost into light brown colored head. When I swirled that up, there, were, there weren't just sheets. There were curtains, like insane, the legs around the glass. Like it coated them. And it's, I can see it like, you know, it's still sitting there, but as I, oh my God, it's like crazy. It looks like so like sticky and just, I don't know. Hold it up to the light. It looks nice. You know, it's it's definitely pitch black for the most part, but more of like a dark brown, like in person, but I, you know, on camera it's gonna be pitch black. It's like a ruby red tinge down here, like almost like a Dr. Pepper kind of vibe. But uh, yeah, I mean, in the hashtag proper glassware, I think it looks pretty fantastic. And you know, you're not gonna get a huge head at something at 17.2%, so. All right, let's get a nose. It's crazy. Oh my God. Oh. It just smells like brown sugar, maple, caramel. Just, again, burnt sugars, caramelized sugars, including maple and other stuff. Like, it's wild. A big dark chocolate presence, but more of like a 50 or 60% cacao bar. I don't know if it's because it might be slightly infected. Maybe it's starting to turn a little bit. There's a little bit of like a wet, uh, a wet, a wet, a little bit of wet wine, a little bit of red wine, like just a slight touch, like not too big. Like if this is infected at all, my bottle, it's very slight because I would assume like in the nose, it would be like very vibrant with like a vinegary kind of just off, but it's not. Just a little bit of red wine. Oh, it's just, it's so rich and decadent. Yeah, so brown sugar, maple, caramel, toffee, dark chocolate, a little bit of coffee, roasted malt. Not really getting the barrel essence of this one as much. Like, it does have um, a little bit of, like, a vanilla and oak thing, but it's more of that, like, the characteristics you associate with, like, Utopias, which to me is, like, sweeter, kind of, you know, sugary notes. Uh, a lot of, I've had Utopias a couple different times. I got, like, maple the one time. Other time, I got big brown sugar, caramel, toffee, like, butterscotch, and that's kind of what's going on here. It smells boozy. It's 17.2%. I'm not going to say you're bullshit and be like, oh, it hides the alcohol. Well, because it doesn't. It's like burning my nostrils. Yes, I go back for each sip. I mean, uh, each uh, uh, whiff. 
it smells pretty fucking gnarly. Uh, does it smell better than like a regular worldwide stout or like that wake up? I, it smells way different, but uh, in, a, in a unique way, that's also really nice. So let's get into it. And also it says to drink at 55 degrees Fahrenheit. This is out of my darker beer fridge at 54 degrees Fahrenheit. So by the time I turn on the camera and everything, it's probably right in the prime drinking temperature. Anyway, let's get into it. Cheers, everybody. And thanks to Founders uh, Q for um, recommending this one, suggesting this one. And like, I probably would have forgot about this one for another couple years. So cheers. It's fucking delicious. It's fucking boozy still. Three years, it's still boozy. It's not infected. Um, that red wine, kind of slight, almost tartness, not here. This is a big fucking beer. 17.2%, uh, I, I, it obviously. Why do I say it's the most obvious shit? It's a big beer, it's 17.2%. A fucking, of course it's a big beer, Joe. What I mean, though, is like, this is this is fucking intense. Dare I say bombastic. Shout out to Paul over at PA Produce. It's fuck. I just kind of want to let it linger on my palate because it's really delicious. It's real delicious. That said, 17.2%. Bit thin. This is like... Low to medium full body, which sounds crazy considering how big it is at the ABV, but definitely is thin. If I was to do this blind, I, it would be tough. It would be really tough to guess the ABV because it is so boozy on the palate. Like my fucking chest is on fire, my stomach's on fire. They're like every time I take a sip, like throughout my entire palate into my nose, it's just like that ethanol, just like big boozy note. Um, but then you know, <laughs> I sit here and go, well, it's a bit thin. I might guess 15 or 16 percent so it doesn't really hide it at all but uh do you want a beer like this to hide the alcohol maybe some do maybe some don't i don't know i'm kind of in between the mouthy on the other hand moderate carbonation relatively smooth on the palate all things considered not really soft not really creamy i think the mouth feels fine body's a bit thin the taste this is super complex Probably not enough time in like a 15, 20 minute review for me to tell you about all the tasting notes. But right up front, more so than the nose, I'm getting roasted malt. It's a big, hefty roasted malt vibe. But then layers of like roasty, toasty chocolate. So again, like 40, 50% cacao butter, um, something in that realm. There's a bit of coffee roast. But it's more like a drying, like chocolate and roasty character at the forefront. Kind of like if you get an IPA and you start getting the bittering components at the front of the palate. That's what's kind of happening here. It's a little bit bittering at the front of the palate. So that's where I associate it with more of like a, say a 40, 50, 60% cacao bar because it has that bittering chocolate or like a baker's chocolate kind of vibe. After that, however, that's where like all that brown sugar, that caramelized sugar, I'm getting brown sugar, caramel, toffee, butterscotch, bit of molasses. For the most part though, it's really that brown sugar note with a touch of like a Scotia maple kind of uh, accentuating all that all that uh, sweet, sugary kind of um, vibe to the beer. Midway through the palate, I get a touch of dark fruit, uh, black cherry, maybe a little bit of like a dried, like, like a fig or a date. Maybe even a red grape. Maybe I, you know, talked about that red wine in the in the nose, not really getting that like tartness or anything in the in the taste, but maybe a little bit of uh, like a, a red grape. Then on the second half of the palate is where the Utopius barrel hits, and it's it's crazy. It's um, I, I feel like the maple gets a little bit more pronounced on the finish, but then you get vanilla, you get oak, you get you get like a peppery kind of spirit uh, character as well. That brown sugar kind of comes back to the forefront. The barrel's definitely here, but it's not overstepping its boundaries. Like it's 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 noticeable. It's there, but you still get the base worldwide stout, which is it's a fucking really good beer. And I think the Utopius bar, uh, barrel is doing kind of what. It should, and that's accentuating the base beer. Uh, it finishes pretty, like, bone dry, mild to moderate bitterness, and really boozy. You can't, I mean, it's 17.2%, as I said, for like the half, you know, like a half dozen times. It's hard to hide the alcohol here. However, I'm taking sips, and as I get to you to take sips, I'm not bullshitting you. From the palate into my esophagus, down into my stomach, it's just, you can feel the warming nature. Like if you take like, you know, if you're sipping on like a whiskey or a bourbon or some kind of spirit, like as you take that sip, it goes right through everything. That's kind of what's happening here. That's how big and like bold it is as far as the, the booziness is concerned. Really complex, 
fucking delicious. But there's some things stopping me from going nuts about it. I'll tell you right now, the 120 minute Utopia's Barrel Age, better than this for my palate because that came off more of like, and it's because 120 to me, whether it's fresh, whether it's aged, whatever, it's an American barley wine. So then they age in the Utopia's Barrel and it's like uh, more or less a barrel aged American barley wine that kind of turns into slight English barley wine vibe or like an old ale. And I love that. I, I love that. So that beer was spectacular. This isn't far behind, but it's also not quite to that level. But then again, I had that one relatively fresh. This is definitely aged. I would I would say I would hate to see this fresh, but I would have loved to see it fresh just to see how different it is because I feel like the booziness was even more so. And, um, you know, fresh, how uh, vibrant, maybe like the hop character this one is and whatnot. There really is no hop character. Maybe on the finish, a little bit of earthiness. This is a fucking big, rich, boozy, decadent beer. And I'm going to probably take, maybe some of you guys roll your eyes when I say this, but like that's going to take me an hour, hour and a half to finish. Like I'm going to take sips over the next hour, an hour and a half, and I'll finally put it down. It'll come to room temperature. I'll get different characteristics and whatnot. But this is a fucking super rich, decadent, bold, intense beer that um, isn't meant to be sit, you know, to reviewed in, in this term, like a couple sips and that's it. It's like, this is a beer that you got to take your time with. And it's a, uh, fucking really good it is it's really good now i'm getting more of like i said red grape earlier i'm getting more of like a, a purple grape almost like a concord grape very slight like again maybe maybe this is turning slightly right where i'm getting a little bit of grapey vibe which you know could be like red wine so then you start thinking like vinegary notes nothing vinegar here nothing it's just Maybe it's just the dark fruit character. This is, this is a bit more vibrant here, uh, age. But this is fucking absolutely phenomenal. This is great. I think I gave the 120-minute uh, Utopia's Barrel Age like a 47548. This isn't going to get that high, but it's not going to be far off. So I'm going to give Utopia's Barrel Age Worldwide South the 2021 release or vintage or whatever you want to call it, exactly three years old. I'm going to give this a high 4.5 out of 5. I'm going to go 4.6. This is great. Should have bought two, should have reviewed one, uh, you know, when it came, first came out and then came back and did this review. But you know what? Sometimes you just fucking do whatever you want. Like, I don't know. I got a lot of beers in my cellar that, you know, I, I never tried before. Most of the beers in my cellar I have had before. I bought a couple bottles of them and I drink one fresh and age it. So, you know, at some point when I get a viewer's choice cellar Sunday off the ground, like I say, with all these different fucking themes that I want to do, um, you'll see. I got a lot of old ass beers that hopefully have held up. Maybe not, but you know, it is what it is. Anyway, Thanks to Founders uh, Q uh, for, you know, suggesting this one, recommending it. It's, it was fun. I'm glad I got into it. And I'm glad I did exactly three years old. But, yeah, 4.6 out of uh, 5. Fucking delicious. If you have a bottle of this right now, if you bought a four-pack of it, open one up. I want to see uh, what you think about it. Um, I would love to hear from other people. So please post in the comment section if you've had this one before or you have an aged bottle or two that you want to crack open. Price point availability. I don't remember what I paid for this one, but most of these Danger Cat beers from Dogfish Head, typically $10 a bottle or maybe even a little bit more like 10 to 11 bucks. And then the four packs are typically 40 bucks a four pack here in the Buffalo New York area. I've had some of you say like, oh, I can find, you know, Worldwide Sour or 120 Minute or any of the variants, you know, more in like the 34 to 36 to 38 dollar range. If you can, that's awesome. You're not probably going to find this unless you live like, uh, shout out to a fellow uh, beer tuber and very good friend of mine, Matt over at Massive Beers. You know, he lives in, in New Jersey and he'll go to like a lot of old places in, in PA and, and New Jersey, a lot of like bottle shops that just have like beers with like cobwebs and shit on them. And I'll just be like, oh yeah, I found this beer from 10 years ago. Like he might be able to find a bottle of, of the 2021 vintage, um, but a lot of you probably won't. I know I can't, but if you do have it in your cellar, in your fridge, or you can get it off the shelf locally, I would love to hear from you because this is wild. And and so the availability is like, you really can't find this one. And the price point's about $40 a four pack. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure this is a longer review. I don't know. I don't, you know, I don't know until I'm done filming this one, but typically something like this, 15, 16, 17 minutes, maybe it's a little bit less. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I'm, it's funny as I'm sitting here talking to you, like my chest is still on fire. Like, like I just feel like I fucking drank a uh, glass of whiskey. That's kind of what it feels like right now. It's just like that. The aftershock, the after effects is just like, ooh, big, big, <laughs> big warming in my chest and in my stomach. But um, I don't regret it. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm going to sip on that for the next hour, hour and a half and enjoy every second of it. So I'm going to shut this one down. I think I pretty much talked about everything. I think the biggest knock to this beer is the fact that the body's thin for 17.2% um, ABV. And I don't know what else, 
I mean, the, the flavor isn't as amazing as like, like again, comparing to the 120 minute uh, Utopia's Barrel Aged IPA. Like that one just had more flavors that kind of resonated with me. This is still delicious. It's just not to that level. I gave it a 4.6. So anyway, I'm just rambling now. I'm going to shut it down. So once again, thanks to Founders Q for the recommendation. And I, I say this in every review. I never ask anybody for, you know, liking the video or subscribing or any of that stuff. If you do one thing, please post a comment section. If you want to hit the like button or you want to give me a sub, that's awesome. Uh, but I want to hear the reason why my channel exists is because I want to talk to like-minded individuals when it comes to this beautiful hobby we have, which is uh, beer and craft beer specifically. And if somebody out there watches this video and they're like, yeah, I had that fresh or man, I had that recently and you don't post a comment, I feel like we're missing something. And that's a good interaction and, and, and some kind of discussion we can have about this beer. So please, if you've had this one before, no matter the age of it, post in the comment section so we can chat it up. Anyway, I'm shutting this one down to the next one. Cheers.